Back here on First Up, the first stop in your busy day. Seven minutes after eight is our time on this Thursday morning. It's Thursday the 27th of May. It's the third hour of our simulcast and we just want to encourage you to continue being a part of the show. Keep sending in your text messages at 78247. Just type in talk, leave a space, type your message and send everything to 78247. And uh, if you have your cabinet picks, please keep sending them because before the show is over today, uh, I'm going to read out what people have been sending us on, on our text message uh, site in terms of what their cabinet picks are. Right now, though, we want to get back to the business of the news making here on First Up. And we've brought back into studio with us this morning Daryl Joseph, a psychologist, who's been with us uh, during the election period, putting a different spin on election activity. And now post-election, we're going to be doing a psychological assessment as to you know everything that took place and the way forward. So welcome once again, Daryl Joseph. Thank you very much, Jesse May. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> All right. Uh, first things first, mm -hmm. the state of mind of those who won. All right. I'm going to make a couple of um, comparisons of things that we all know very well. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how the analogy applies to what's happening right now. The analogy of the honeymoon, OK? And the analogy of the new parent and what a couple in a honeymoon goes through and what a new parent goes through, mm -hmm. all right? So you know the honeymoon, there's a lot of joy. There's a lot of relief that, you know, finally all of the preparation is over and so on, and we can get down to the business now and so on. You know? So it's a bit of a celebration and, and, and so on. Um, the analogy of the new parent, I can recall certainly my experience. The first time um, I became a parent, when I looked at my child for the first time, there was this overwhelming sense of, you know, love and joy and happiness and satisfaction. And then there was a very sudden realization, I am responsible for this human being. The buck stops with me. If I mess this up, this child messes up, and I can't blame anybody else, <laughs> you know? I can't blame society, or I can't blame politicians, anybody else, the buck stops with me, all right? So in terms of the, um, I would say both the supporters as well as the members of the People's Partnership, I think they're gonna be going through a combination of those two things at this point in time. There's the honeymoon sort of a, a feeling, but there's also that anxiety that comes with being a new parent, where yeah, yes, you know, um, now I have it to do, and I better get it right because the bug stops with Do you think the experience will help dissipate those feelings of anxiety at all? I mean, mm -hmm. both sides, well, sorry, People's Partnership and the mm -hmm. UNC, well, the UNC and the COP have yes. experienced members. Yes. Will that help them? And there are a lot of experienced parents yes. in that bunch. Yeah. Will that help them in this scenario? It will help, but I mean, even, I mean, a parent who has more than one child will tell you, even when you have the second or third or even beyond that, there's still a certain degree of anxiety that steps in because um, you can't rest on what you may have done before or what you may have known from before. Mm -hmm. The situation is different. The country, the atmosphere, the circumstances we find ourselves in are very different now than they were during the last UNC regime. So there are things that you know need to be addressed. And once there are new elements that are introduced into the mix, <laughs> Hello, friend. Once there are new elements that are introduced into the mix, you know, it's going to produce some difference in terms of approach and so on. And change always brings a certain amount of anxiety with it. Mm. So let's look at what's happening separate and apart from the, the new parent syndrome and the mm -hmm. honeymoon syndrome. What else is going on in the minds of, of the winning side? Mm -hmm. um, I think, well, I really have to commend the, the Prime Minister for her speech yesterday because she, she has set the stage for what we all hope all right, will be the way that the government will conduct its business. She has reinforced the messages that were championed during the campaign, the messages of accountability, the messages of listening to the people, of servitude and so on. She's reinforced those. And it's important, the things that happened very early on during this week and you know, the coming days and so on are extremely important because they're gonna set the stage for what happens next. All right. Now we all know during a crisis, people tend to rally together and people tend to be focused on the crisis. It's when the crisis is over and things begin to settle back down to normal, you may find some old habits, some old ways of thinking being, you know, beginning to seep back into the mix. And so it is extremely important that focus is retained, not, not only that the stage is set, but that the stage is set in a way that focus can be retained for the long haul. They've already uh, started 
they've hit the ground running mm -hmm. because of the crisis of the flooding that's happened uh, across the country mm -hmm. and in traditional areas, as mm -hmm. it were, exacerbated further by the very uh, dry season that we had, the drought yes. that we experienced. Yes. This kind of crisis, uh, even though people are uh, in distress, we've had reports from Prakash Ramada, who was on the show earlier yes. this morning, that people are still, they're still hopeful, they're still rallying, they're not angry and upset as they may have been in times mm -hmm. past, mm -hmm. because they get the sense that finally, maybe, this might be the last time <laughs> they go through something like this. Right. Remember now the supporters, persons who, <laughs> citizens who supported the party and so on, even persons who haven't supported and are looking on, they will also be experiencing their own form of that honeymoon that I spoke of earlier on, all right? So you may find people may have a little bit, you know, they may go a little bit easier in terms of, all right, government just came in, you can't expect them to change things overnight. So yes, you know, we'll deal with this flooding thing now, um, and hopefully, you know, it's going to be resolved and it will not happen again in the future. And I remember, you know, I recall 1986. The mood in the country to me feels very much the same now as it felt in those days after 1986. Um, I remember there was a cleanup campaign. I, of course, I was a little child, a toddler. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a child, but the, there was a cleanup campaign. And um, I remember everybody coming out in the neighborhood and, you know, everybody participated and so on. And there was this general spirit of, you know, well-being and unity and togetherness and so on. So I think you're going to be seeing that now for, you know, for some time. For and some the converse of the UNC and the COP's supporters and the TOP and all the other parties that form that partnership, mm -hmm. the converse is the PNM supporters. And we had a caller calling in on Tuesday morning from Marabella and was crying on the phone, on yes, the line. Yes. I mean, what sort of state of, I mean, obviously there would be some level of sadness and disappointment mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, as someone pr with the sort of professional background, do you see that getting worse? Perhaps can that become a severe problem, you know, an election result, an election season, mm -hmm. affecting someone's actual quality of life now in a Absolutely. long term? I, I don't want to say long term, but yes. at you know, where it lasts more than a week or it can last more than two weeks. Yes. Can that happen? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, in grief therapy, okay, there, you know, there are always theories that accompany any kind of work that therapists do, the kind of right. work that I do. All right. In grief therapy, there are generally accepted five stages of grieving. All right. You may have heard it before and it may sound <laughs> it. It's really amazing to actually see it in action though. When you actually get someone who is going through it mm -hmm. and you see how real it actually is, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. All right. So we have the five stages. We have denial, which is the first stage. Yes. Right. We have anger. Okay. We have bargaining. We have depression acceptance. and acceptance. All right. Denial is normally the first thing that happens. This can't be true. <sighs> this can't really be happening. Um, they, they need to recount something or the other. I must be looking at the wrong television. Um, something must be wrong, right? A sort of a disbelief. The and teeth, you find, there was corruption somewhere. Uh, yes. You find that that will happen usually at the point in time. So on the night itself, so maybe on the night of Monday the 24th, you would have found a lot of people in denial, okay? Now, anger usually begins to set in very soon after or in the middle of it. So now... I, I can't just stop you about anger, Absolutely. though, because yeah. I've noticed that there... I don't know if it's my imagination, but mm -hmm. and I know other people I've been talking to have been saying mm -hmm. that they've noticed that people seem to be a little more aggressive now. Do you, mm -hmm. Is that really manifesting itself in everyday life? C could we really say that as an established uh, occurrence, that the anger that one would experience due, due to the elections and due to you know, having to deal with the grieving yes. would really affect the quality of life? Do you see, because road rage, I, I noticed people were a lot more aggressive, aggressive on the roads on, on Tuesday, and yeah. I was a little bit, and I'm not talking, because I can't tell who voted for who. No. I, I, I'm just simply referring to the fact that I noticed there was a change. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it in my, within myself, and I live on the East West Corridor. So, mm -hmm. I, as I said, I can't say who voted for no, who. Because you're in the middle of, a, right. middle of the action. Right. So, and, <laughs> so, is it possible that anger can really manifest itself? I mean. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You see, the human psyche needs to resolve any crisis or any trauma before it can settle and move on. And that, re re that resolving is a, is a difficult process. It's not an easy process. So, you're going to find people are going to be angry at the, the former prime minister. Minister, they're going to be angry at supporters of the party. They'll be angry at supporters of the other party. You know, they, they will attempt to address their anger or, or direct their anger in one or more, you know, one or more different ways. So you can find that the anger level can raise for a while. But remember, that is also synonymous with early stages of grief. And for very, for a lot of people, this really is grief. Huh? It really represents the same kind of 
tragic loss that one feels when they lose somebody there and close to them. And anger right. and depression, just to skip ahead of you a little sure, bit, sure, anger sure. and depression can be the two that actually can have real tangible effects on mm -hmm. someone's yeah. life. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't understand this, but depression can be a manifestation of anger. Huh? Okay. All right. Um, the, the two are very closely linked. People don't realize that. And actually, it, it can flip one way or the other, all right? Um, when you think of depression, you tend to think of the, the classic case of the depressed person who is mm -hmm. quiet and you know gloomy and so yeah. on, right? But a depressed person can also act out very angrily, OK? So you may see, and, and I mean, if we look at, um, you know, again, we have to go back to our, our youth, all of our young men in particular, the angry way that they act out and so on. A lot of it is because of depression, huh? Okay, so we were at anger, and you're going to move on to bargaining, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, bargaining um, is a some, somewhat contentious stage. Bargaining sometimes occurs, okay, in the case of a person who's dying, it can actually occur before the death, where the person starts asking God, you know, for example, oh gosh, please give them, heal them miraculously, give them some more time, you know, something along those lines. But it can also occur during the process of grieving as well, as in, oh gosh, let something happen so that um, we have to have another election again, or, you know, that they discover some, mm. I, I was, um, hanging out with some people on Tuesday, you know, we were joking about, I was giving them some, you know, little pick on thing, and I was saying that, um, they, they're gonna find a thousand boxes somewhere, man, you all will be okay, don't worry about it, you know? <laughs> I was just heckling them, eh, because mm -hmm. we were all heckling each other, and so on, you know? But did um, their faces light up and go like, oh yeah, that could happen? <laughs> was, was their reaction like that, like, uh, Unfortunately, yeah. these people know me too well, so okay. no. <laughs> You know, we were just throwing, we were just bantering with each other and so, you know. Um, but, you know, you find people may resort to that kind of thinking as well, you know. Um, and that will continue for a while until you begin to get, hopefully, to the acceptance stage, all right? Where you begin to accept now that, look, this has happened. Um, I'm still here. I still have to live. My children still have to live. Uh, I have to do the things that I had to do last week and the week before that. And I need to come to terms with this and move on. Was there a depression stage or was it ang uh, denial, depression is anger? Okay. All right, so like after anger, right. bargaining, depression. Okay. All right? Bear in mind, these stages don't necessarily occur in sequential order. Okay? A person can actually be experiencing all of them at the same time, or maybe two of them at a time and then progress to a third or a fourth. There's no set pattern in which it happens, but the general flow is what I outlined. Okay? Let's look at what's happening inside the. Uh People's National Movement, mm -hmm. that political party. Mm -hmm. We're seeing signs uh, in some quarters of denial. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing some people depressed and acting mm -hmm. out angrily. Yes. Uh, we're, also, we're also seeing real anger. Mm -hmm. um, th I don't think they've got to the point of bargaining or acceptance yet, or there's a bit of acceptance. But what, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you seeing based on, based on what we're hearing in the news? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Let me just pick up on a little comment that I heard. Huh? I heard a comment, and I can't quite remember exactly who it was who said it, but I heard a comment that um, you know, the swing in votes was rather strange. <laughs> right? I heard that comment more than once from more than one individual, you know, on the opposition side. Mm. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I was wondering if that was somehow a manifestation of maybe that same denial that denial, we've been talking yeah. about. You know, that not an out and out um, accusation but you know an attempt to deal or come to terms with the magnitude of what has happened okay. and i actually remember seeing a similar thing happen in the past on the other side mm -hmm. right i remember you know very early accusations about maybe tampering or padding, padding or yeah. something yeah. like that you know as opposed to trying to get down to the business of figuring out what exactly happened and why did it happen and what do I need to go forward from here? But it is part and parcel of the whole grieving process. Because we choose, to, it's sometimes better to blame someone else than accept that perhaps, you know, I was at fault here. It's easier. And what we did as a party or, as a, or, or what I did as an individual mm -hmm. could have contributed to this. It, it probably was tea foods or something. It couldn't be that, you know, that what we, you don't take responsibility then. Not that yes. I'm saying that anyone needs to take responsibility for mm -hmm. anything, that anyone has done anything wrong, yes. but I'm just saying. Uh, what I want to ask you about, uh, Mr. Manning, yes. could he be a recipient of post-traumatic stress, sort of? What, what would his mindset be like, having gone through what he's gone through? I mean, mm -hmm. he's a man that's right now, I, I don't think anybody would probably want to be in his shoes at all. No, not at all. I certainly wouldn't want to be. Um, Mr. Manning is a, a particularly um, strong individual in the sense that he doesn't often allow his feelings to show. 
mm -hmm. all right? He tends to, you know, he, he says what he is supposed to say. Let's put it that way, all right? And, um, you know, he puts forward this, you know, th this image of being, you know, extremely in control of his emotions and, you know, not being swayed and so on. But he's a human being. And he, despite his great ability to do so, I think everybody could have seen on the night of the election, you know, you could have seen the remorse and the sorrow and the shock and everything we've been talking about. You could have, for the first time, for, you know, for many people, you could have actually seen it, okay? The poker face was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine that this is an easy time for Mr. Manning right now at all. Let's look at what's happening with Mr. Manning now. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is... Uh, 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 um, there's no way to describe the change that has come into his life at this point in time. Mm -hmm. He was one thing one day, and the next day he has become something else. It's as though someone pulled the rug out from under him while he was sitting in the chair. Yes. So he's literally flat on his back. Yes. Um, he's going to need some therapy, isn't he, to help make the transition from that life mm -hmm. into the new one that he must head into? I would humbly say so. He needs to be speaking to somebody. I don't know who that person is, but he needs to be speaking with somebody. Um, I think an experience like this is, is too large and too traumatic of an experience to simply sit down in your own chair, you know, and just sit down and kind of mull it over and think it through and so on. You need to voice these things and to, you know, to bounce the ideas off of somebody at least, right, in order to come to some kind of resolution of it. I think what, what was um, really telling for me was that um, there was, you know, politicians say all sorts of things during an election campaign, but then usually afterwards, you get to see a little bit more of what they were really thinking, mm -hmm. all right? There seemed to be genuine shock on Mr. Manning's face at not just the, the loss itself, but the magnitude of the loss. There seemed to be a genuine sense of shock, you know? So could we go that and put that perhaps to another mindset and another uh, frame of mind that he mm -hmm. is that as an individual, mm -hmm that he may have been laboring under some sort of misapprehension as far as the reality of what he was facing, that when he called an election, mm -hmm. perhaps that he was not too in touch with the p reality of it. Because mm -hmm. as someone who's in office, you're calling an election, you obviously think you're going to win, or mm -hmm. you know you're going to win, but now you've underestimated it. So is it that he maybe was unrealistic, and that is a sign of something else? that? You know, is, is being is, is living in one domain as opposed to the reality of the situation. Uh, uh, it, it seems like an odd question, but I'm just saying. He, you say, you're, you're saying in your professional opinion, he was so shocked. But I'm thinking in my mind, you couldn't be that shocked because all along you knew well aware what the realities in Trinidad was. You knew what public opinion was like. So could you really be that shocked by? the results. Do you think that that is perhaps yes. a mirror of something else in the thinking of Patrick Manning? All right. I, I don't want to just um, narrow it down to Patrick Manning. I'll make a more general statement. Um, one of the really beautiful things about the work I do, and I guess the work you do as well, right? You get to meet and interact with lots of different people in different spheres. And I recall speaking to a particular politician very early in their tenure. And, you know, I asked them, you know, what's this thing really like, you know? And basically what they were saying is that, you know, one day you are a citizen, just like everybody else, and you line up and you wait for things to happen and, you know, you get things done yourself and so on. And the next day there's almost an, a, a complete switch. Um, all of a sudden, the things you're accustomed to doing, you don't need to do those things anymore. There are people there who are waiting for you. There are people who are always around to affirm you and make you feel good about yourself and to mm -hmm. praise you and so on. And it's, you, you have to take a great deal of effort to remain grounded. All right? So you have this chorus of voices around you, all of a sudden, that are telling you, yes, you did such a great job. Yes, you're correct. Yes, you're right to do this. Yes, you should do so, you know? And so, it, you know, if, and, and the, the human psyche, remember, we don't like to feel badly about ourselves, all right? So we will naturally gravitate towards what makes us feel good, okay? That's a natural human tendency. So if you have a chorus of voices around you that you, you know, you, you trust, and they're telling you one thing. And in between, you hear some voices of dissent saying something else. It's very easy to rationalize the situation by saying, well, they can't be right. Mm -hmm. Because you know the amount of voices around me saying that I'm correct. If I were wrong, somebody would tell me that I were wrong. But you may not realize that, you know. <laughs> so okay. it can happen. To answer your question, it can happen. It absolutely can happen. But you're, you're suggesting that Mr. Manning really needs to have to chat with someone. He needs to seek proper counsel. 
Well, I am not going to make that particular recommendation in terms of, uh, you know, I'm not going to make a diagnosis <laughs> per se, but I'm going to say that, you know, it's important for him as for any other individual, um, whether they be former prime minister, whether they be cabinet member, whether they be supporter, because a lot of supporters hurting as well, mm -hmm. all right? Talk this thing out. Um, get it out of your system, deal with it, come to accept it and so on and move on. Because if you just leave this inside churning, the results are not going to be good. Behaviorally, attitudinally, the results are not going to be good for the individuals and of course whoever they have to interact with. Can we go now to the mind of the new Prime Minister, Mrs. Kamala Prasad Bisesa? Yes. She's going through the honeymoon syndrome. She's mm -hmm. going through the new parent syndrome. Yes. What else is she going through? All right. She is obviously going through um, what well, her honeymoon period is supposed to be a lot shorter, a lot more abrupt <laughs> than everybody else's. All right. Because just like, let me, go, let me go back to the new parent. All right. Just like the new parent, as I told you, I had this realization in the middle of all the joy and, oh, baby, baby, baby. Whoa, this is my son. And you know, if this, if I mess this up, the world, the universe, everybody's going to point and say, Daryl, you messed this up, all right? She has to be going through that right now, okay? Um, she has to be going through, and you know, it's really important that she try to figure out exactly how she got into the position mm -hmm. that she is right now. Now that might sound simple because she won the election, all right? Why exactly did she win and why exactly did she win so overwhelmingly? This has to be a concern for her at this point in time. Because if you attribute the wrong reason for something that happened, then you can go down the wrong road thinking that you have, you know, thinking that you, you're doing things as they should, all right? So um, I think, you know, a lot of these questions about exactly why things happened the way they did are going to be going through her mind. I think there's also going to be questions about um, the concerns raised during the campaign about the stability of the, the partnership team and you know after we get over as I said after the initial crisis of winning the election is concerned you know how do I now manage all of these strong personalities that are going to be around and you know uh, make sure that we learn from previous you know situations previous things that happen and put things in place to mitigate against conflict and, and so on happening you know so there's a lot of things that are going to be going on in her mind and um, you know that can cause us a certain kind of anxiety, but it doesn't have to be a negative anxiety because anxiety, if handled correctly, can motivate you and you know to produce your best, to put out your best, to work a little bit harder, to push a little bit harder, and so on, um, in order to do your best. In terms of the People's Partnership mm -hmm. and and the officials who are there in the partnership. Um, would you recommend that they do one of those uh, team building exercises where you have to do the exercise in trust so that they can work together to make sure that the coalition you know doesn't fall apart too early they need to do some kind of consolidation very early on again to set the stage for what has to happen over the next hopefully five years all right. I, 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 like many other people, I'm hoping that we're not doing this kind of analysis again in two years or three years from now. All right. So, yes, I think it would make sense for them to do some kind of team consolidation very early on. All right. Um, of course, not to deflect from doing the people's work, which is important. You know, they need to go out and attend to the flooding and things that are happening. But some kind of team consolidation should take place very early to set the stage, to make sure that everybody's on the same page, to make sure that they have proper mechanisms for dealing with issues and conflicts as they arise and so on, and so that everybody can get, as you were saying, a sense of trust, all right? A sense of, you know, we're settled, we're one team, and we're moving forward. Get out of the election, um, the election thinking, or the, the election. The election is over now, all right? So we need to move forward now as government, doing the people's work. Let's look at the, the former Prime Minister and the current Prime Minister. The former mm -hmm. Prime Minister was cast as a father figure. Mm -hmm. The current Prime Minister is cast as a mother figure. Mm -hmm. People are saying, we had a father before uh, running things. We need a mother now yes. to do things differently. Yes. Is that an unfair weight or burden to put on any of those leaders? No, I don't think so at all. Um, because of our system, well, I mean, our system, just like many other, most other countries, you know, we have usually one person who is identified as the head. And just like in a home, um, you may have two parents, but usually one parent or the other may be more identified as the head of the home, okay? So in Trinidad and Tobago, we have had a father for a number of years, for a very long period, and now we have a mother. I think the analogy is appropriate. I think it is correct. And I think it's also quite good for the leader to think of themselves in that way. Because if you can, I mean, there are certain things about mothers that, let, let, let's, let's talk about mothers a little bit, right? Mothers generally are more nurturers, 
okay? Um, generally, the ones that spend more hands-on time, you know, caring and looking after and so on, not that fathers don't do those things. We'll discuss that another time. Another time, uh, another yeah. time all right? Mm -hmm. But mothers generally are, you know, the more nurturing ones, the more hands-on and so on, okay? Um, probably the climate that we find ourselves in right now, that's what's needed, huh? That's what's needed. People need to feel that touch. They need to feel a little bit held, a little bit, you know, looked after and cuddled and so on in order for us to regain our um, composure and our sense of, you know, settled, you know, feeling settled and able to move on and, and do the things that we need to do. Daryl Joseph, thanks for joining us on set this morning mm -hmm. on First Up, and thanks for putting a different spin on Elections 2010 and its aftermath. We are going to go to a break now. When we come back, we'll have a little more news making here on First Up, so stay with us.